All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over complex four of the electron transport chain. In the last video, complex three, I mentioned that an electron from ubiquitin null goes on to cytochrome C and basically will go to complex four. And that is exactly what happens. So think about complex four as a big, huge proton pump. Okay, that's its main job. Complex four is actually quite easy. The biggest thing that people struggle with is this one half oxygen, which I'm gonna get into. So what's happening here? So like I said, cytochrome C is basically gonna drop off two electrons into this complex space, okay? Now you're probably wondering, why is it two electrons? Because here I said it was one electron. Well, in the last video in complex three, I mentioned there are two rounds of complex three. There's round one and round two. So each round produces an electron. So this is assuming both rounds of, are finished, okay? And that is why we have two electrons here. Now, all this stuff here is kind of junk. Most professors won't ask you about it, but just in case I put it on here. My professor, when I took biochemistry, did not care about this information, but yours may. So what it basically happens is the electron just cannot go into the matrix space. It needs to play a little bit of hopscotch. So first it's gonna to go to this copper subunit, copper A, then cytochrome A, then cytochrome A1, and this copper B unit. That's basically it. Okay, so once it's at the copper B, B unit, it's far enough where it can actually go to the matrix. Now here's what's gonna happen. From the matrix side, so this is the matrix, we're gonna have one half O2 plus two protons will make water with the two electrons. So you're probably wondering, what is one half O2? If you have two molecules of oxygen and we take half of that, isn't that just one molecule of oxygen? Right, isn't that just one atom? You're correct, that is. But the reason we have to write one half O2 is because it would be incorrect chemically. We cannot say just a plain old, so we can't draw it saying one oxygen like that, right? That would be incorrect in the world of chemistry because oxygen is just so reactive to everything around it. That is why, because when it's O2, it basically just stays like this, right? It doesn't do anything. So you just can't say one oxygen atom plus two protons will get the water. You can't say that because this does not look right, right? So you have to say the one half O2. It's the, still the same thing. It's just one atom of oxygen. But you have to put the one half in O2 because just the, the reaction is not balanced correctly. That's why. Okay. So what's going to happen is this half O2, so basically just one oxygen atom, plus two protons, plus the two electrons that are coming from cytochrome C will make water. This water is what is used for cellular processes throughout the body. So it can either stay in the matrix and just chill out there, it can participate in metabolic reactions that require water, or you can excrete it out in pee. So when you urinate, this could be the water that's, you know, that's there. Now, what about the proton pump? So when electrons are released from cytochrome C, it basically turbocharges this complex. It basically fills it with free energy. And this free energy causes protons to move from the matrix to the intermembrane space. And that is it. Pretty simple, right? So these protons are gonna be used for the ATP synthase that's coming up in the next video. So once again, when cytochrome C releases the two electrons, it basically turbocharges this entire complex, complex four, because there's just so much free energy being released. It basically propels protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space, which is great. And then the two electrons that we released will make, are involved to make water from this one half O2, or technically one oxygen atom and two protons. That's it. And that is complex four. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And until next time, later.